So do you actually know how to pronounce the name of this guy? No, because when I googled it, all I found was a bunch of YouTube videos of Microsoft Sam saying it out loud, so sorry guys. When it comes to the world of painting and sculpting, the name Giotto of Florence carries more weight than a truck designed to haul adamantium. A painter and sculptor of near unrivaled skill, Giotto was more famous amongst his peers for the large empty sack of fucks he carried around with him at all times. Perfect, I'm good at my job. I'm not putting that bit in. That's for the bonus, people. <laughs> That's all right, we literally fart out content on this channel. <laughs> I'm trying to eat here. No, you're not. <laughs> Don't eat while recording videos. Very rude. <laughs> Any idea how rude it is what you just did then, mate? <laughs> so for those who don't know, who was Giotto and when was he about? Um, he was a painter and sculptor mostly active around the 13th century in Italy during a time known as, get this, the Proto-Renaissance. And he is personally responsible for the creation of several dozen pieces of art considered masterpieces today. Like this nice fresco of people who are clearly about to get their fuck on. Yeah. Mm, yeah. You just see it, can't you? You can see it's like, yeah. They're the people at the back of the house party, like, they're going home together and they try and sneak out at different times so they, people don't know they're going home together, but you can clearly tell that they are. Like, one guy's like, goes, oh, I think I'm just going to call it a night, lads. I'm like, going home a bit early. Like, you know, I've, I'm, I'm up tomorrow, I've got work. And then the girl, like, 10 minutes later goes, oh, my taxi's here. And it's like, you, we know, we saw it. We saw them, old wandering Hans McRichards over there. <laughs> Did you know someone called McRichards? No, what we did is, we're, what we used to do is it's a running joke where whenever we saw someone getting it on with a girl at house parties in one of my old flats, we call them Wandering Hands Mc, whatever the name was. <laughs> so for you, like, Wandering Hands McBrad. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, Wandering Hands McBrad, <laughs> it strikes again. However, whilst Giotto's artistic skill was beyond reproach, it was his magnetic, affable personality and the seeming ease with which he created these masterpieces that really made him popular with his peers. Do you have an example of this? Yes, I do, because there's a very famous story about Giotto of Florence when the Pope at the time was looking for someone to do some artwork for St. Peter's Basilica. And he sent out his messenger with a simple task, simple, of finding the best artist in Italy. Bearing in mind this period was called the Proto-Renaissance. <laughs> you can imagine how difficult that was. And said messenger came into Giotto's workshop and told him, look, yeah, the Pope wants, like, someone, he wants to commission someone to do some artwork, St. Peter's Basilica, because I'm assuming that messenger was from Yorkshire. <laughs> and like, Giotto went, oh, I'd love to do that, because I'm assuming he was also from Yorkshire. He wasn't, he was from Florence, right, hence the name Giotto of Florence. But like, Giotto was like, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm down with that. Um, what do you need? Because I just need a piece of art that shows your skill. And Giotto went, uh, yeah, I think I can do that for you. Um, and looks around, got a piece of empty paper. Empty paper, clear paper, blank paper. Fuck's sake, why can't I know the name of a piece of blank empty paper? Empty paper? Don't know. I used to call it a slice of paper as well at school and got picked on for that. Can you toss me a slice of paper? It's not a slice of paper. And what is it? It's a piece of paper. Slice makes more sense. It's because whenever I saw, I thought all paper came from the photocopier. Because that's where a teacher always got it from. Did you think when you saw those so, big yeah. stacks that they were one thing and they yeah. used to cut them I up? Yeah, the thing sliced it up for you. So I called it a slice. Anyway, I'm getting, it's besides the point. I know what a piece of paper's called these days. This messenger said, like, Giotto, I need something to prove your skill to the Pope. And Giotto went, oh yeah. Got a blank piece of paper. And he went, um, paintbrush, pen, whatever the fuck they used back then. Drew a perfect circle freehand in about five seconds and handed that to the messenger. And if there's anyone out there who's not an artist, that is virtually impossible to do, isn't it? Can, can you think of anyone you know who's skilled enough to draw a perfect circle freehand? I've never heard of anyone who has to draw a circle freehand, except for in that one episode of SpongeBob, where SpongeBob does it and Squidward gets pissed off. <laughs> because it's the one where he goes, how do you draw a perfect circle? Well, first I do this face, and then I remove all the minor details, and then rub some of that out, and it's a perfect circle. So yeah, Giotto took that piece of paper with a perfect circle he drawn freehand on it and handed it to the messenger, who assumed that he was insulting him and, by extension, the Pope, by, like, you know, submitting something so simple. Because obviously the messenger wasn't well versed in art and had no idea. It's pretty much impossible to draw a perfect circle unless you're, like, a genius or, like, some sort of weird, I don't know, like, Rain Man type scenario <laughs> where you just see numbers constantly or you have, like, a robo hand. So he's like, do you really want me to give this to the Pope? And Giotto was like... Don't worry, when you explain to the Pope how I drew it, everything will become clear. So the messenger's like, okay, 
I'll take your word for it, Giotto, like your skill speaks for itself, like evident like the other shit in your workshop. I'll hand it to the Pope. Goes back to the Pope and hands it to him. The Pope similarly went, what is this? It's a circle. And he went, yes, I did tell Giotto that. And he goes, but he told me to tell you that he drew it freehand in five seconds. And the Pope went, oh, and threw away every other piece of art that people submitted and immediately awarded Giotto the commission. I hope in that stack of ones he threw away, there was like someone who drawn a perfect octagon freehand in five seconds. And he just missed I out. I think a perfect circle is more impressive. Well, no, because if you want to get an octagon, you've got to get all the angles right and the length. Well, it's just a series of straight lines. It is, but they've got to be at the exact right angle. Yeah. We're not getting into this argument. <laughs> because theoretically, a circle is just an infinite number of straight lines drawn in the exact right way. So if you do that with like a spirograph, where you keep drawing, if you draw enough straight lines, eventually you'll make a circle in the middle. Flat earthers don't seem to be able to grasp that concept. Shut up. Stop talking about flat earth. <laughs> <laughs> Every video we make, you're always like, Carl, when are we going to talk about the flat earth? That's why we got into this business. <laughs> Let's reveal the truth. Get people to trust the fact fiend brand, then tell them about the flat earth. Brad's not a flat earther, by the way. He just you thinks, you he make just, it sound like I want to push a flat earth agenda on people. He just thinks they've got some very good points. I will actually <laughs> strangle you. <laughs> I, will, getting... I will come on camera for the first time in one of <laughs> these videos, and I will thrall you. Before we continue, can we just talk for a moment about how much of a flex this was on Giotto's part. That something he drew in five seconds was a greater display of artistic skill than anything anyone else in Italy at the time submitted. <laughs> Holy, f how bad would you feel if you found that out? I'd be interested to see what was in the stack of things that were thrown away, because I bet there were masterpieces. I'd be more interested in seeing what the response to it would be, though, from people who aren't artists. So I'm guessing if you showed those other artists, like that picture of a circle, and told them, oh yeah, Giotto or Florence drew this freehand in five seconds. They go, he deserves the fucking commission. I can't do that. I'd want to see that you put all those pieces in a gallery and see what the public could say. So I bet it'd be like a lot like modern art today where people go and see it and go, I could do that. He goes, really? You could draw a perfect circle. Um, one of my favourites is like the soup cans, the Andy Warhol soup cans. Yeah. And people are like, oh, it's just a picture of a soup can. And have you ever seen how big those fucking paintings are? <laughs> and you go up to it and like, those paintings are so fucking huge and they're so detailed and it gets like reflections and stuff in them. And there's like all the, like, the idea of like, oh yeah, there's beauty in simple things. It's just got to look really closely or draw a giant fucking whack off painting or one. So I think my favourite example of that is that painting that's just blue. Have you seen that? Are you familiar with it? I don't think so. It's just a big piece of square canvas that's blue. And it's one of those things that people always make fun of saying, oh yeah, it's just blue. I could do that. And the actual painting itself, I think it's like 14 foot wide or some shit. It takes like the entire wall of a gallery. Yeah. And it's not so much that it's blue, it's that the artist spent like a couple of months or maybe a few years mixing this particular shade of blue because it's the bluest blue known to man. And it's apparently a blue that will never fade. And it's not so much the fact it's just a, a canvas of just actual paint blue. This is the bluest blue you will ever see. This is literally going to blow your mind. I'm proud of that pun. But like, holy shit, I love that idea of oh, like the pinkest pink ever. I've seen that, yeah. Yeah. The camera can't even pick it up. Yeah, it's, um, it's that, no, the, that's the black is black. Vanta black. Oh, I meant the, there is a pinkest pink where yeah, the camera's made by, the I think pink. it was in response to Anish Kapoor, who made the bean in um, Chicago, where he paid for exclusive rights to use Vanta black, which is the super awesome, like, mega black paint that, like, absorbed 99.9% .9 of all lights, so whatever you paint, it looks 2D. So he didn't make it, but he paid some money, so he's the only one who can use it for artwork. Because why would you not want to like see some like cool artwork that looks 2D? And uh, some artist in response just made the pinkest pink ever and said everyone in the world can use it except that guy. <laughs> <sighs> I'm not like the biggest advocate for a lot of uh, modern art, like certain types. Someone, uh, you know, like the people who just like um, Damien Hirst. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm like the shark in formaldehyde. It's cool, but I don't see why. Yeah, I, I see those as installations. Like I went to. Um... I think it was the Saatchi Gallery in London. And one of the ones there that I found fascinating was that they covered basically an entire floor with like a thin layer of oil. Mm. And it was so still that when you look, I, it took me about two or three minutes to figure out that that's what it was because I thought it was just a deep room. Yeah. And when you like look over the edge and see yourself, you're like, oh shit, that's a reflection. Yeah. Because uh, it's genuinely like, I think I've put the photos of it somewhere, it's shocking how reflective they are. Yeah, stuff like that's it. interesting, like the rain room, where it's like, as you walk through it, it constantly rains around you, but it never rains where you're stood. Yeah. That stuff's cool. The people who get like, a cardboard box and like haphazardly like, strew it around a room say, oh, it's art. 
No, it's not. You just had a party and you didn't want to clean up. You're a dickhead. I think ones like that need an actual purpose. Like, is it, um, what's the name of him? Months? The guy who did the, uh, the it was written on the, the urinal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the one where he did it to prove that it was modern art was stupid and that in itself became a piece of art. All those people you hear about, like, that guy left his glasses on a floor in a modern art museum. People went up taking photos of it <laughs> and stuff like that. It's like, yeah. You can make fun of modern art today, but I like the ones where it's like demonstrating a concept, or like, this, like that one, like really blue painting. So if we get back to Giotto, okay. do we have any more examples of him not giving the slightest fuck? Well, there's another story from when he was just a mere painter's apprentice. And back in those days, painters' apprentices would like cut their teeth by doing like minor details in larger paintings. Um, like, I think Michelangelo used to do that, and there's a famous story that um, he was told like draw the wings on like a baby cherub or something like that in a painting. And the painting he did was so beautiful, his master quit on the spot, right, snapped his brush and left. He's like, this one thing he's done is better than my entire masterpiece. But like, Giotto was like being told like, by his master, put some background detail in this painting I've done, I'm going to go out to the pub, like, or whatever the like, you know, 13th century Italian equivalent was of a pub. And um, Giotto did that, and he was bored, and went, oh, I know what I'll do, I'm going to paint a really realistic life-size fly on the front of the canvas, like on someone's face or some shit, and just see what my master does when he comes back. And as Giotto predicted, his master came back, saw the fly and tried to shoot it away, and then got really annoyed when the fly stubbornly refused to move. And he kept shooing it and shooing it and shooing it. Eventually he went on and he slapped the canvas, trying to scare it away. Notice that, wait, that's not a real fly. That's been painted on. Who did this? And Giotto thought, oh, it was me. And he was so impressed that he gave Giotto like whatever the 13th, 13th century Italian equivalent of the high five was for being so fucking good. But I love that. Like, what else do you think you could have painted on there to really freak the guy out? Because if you're that good at painting, you can paint a fly that people think is real. I think you should have done with a spider. If I was that good at painting, I would be absolutely painting spiders on people's bathroom mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Just on the walls and the corners, yeah. everywhere. When people are asleep, I do that thing. I go to someone's bedroom light and I paint a giant realistic looking spider just near the rosebud next to the light. So when they turn the light off and went to sleep and you know your eyes are still adjusting, they just see the outline of a realistic spider appear above the bed. Because that's happened to me as a kid. And I, I don't think it's the most scared I've ever been. Because Joe, you know what happened, Brad? What happened? The spider fell off the roof. <laughs> what landed on your face? No, it landed on my quilt. Oh. Yeah. So if anyone out there is scared of spiders, you can probably imagine what I did. And I did what I think was the sickest 10 hit combo seen outside of a Tekken game to my quilt. Because my quilt went across that fucking room like I would drop kicked it. That quilt did not have a chance. I never found the spider. Yeah. I, th I slept like, outside my door that night with my quilt pressed against the door so it couldn't get out and get me. What if it was still on the quilt? Don't do this to me, Brad. It was a long time ago, but it's still quite fresh. You know what I'd have painted? Mm. I'd have painted like a tear like as if someone's got a knife and cut through the canvas. Oh, that'd be good. So he goes up and thinks someone's like dicked around with yeah. his painting and then realises he just painted it on. So I'd like to think though that he would have gone and tried to correct it. Like people do when they buy ripped jeans and you know, so it's like their mum's sewing up the rips because they think that they just ripped their jeans by accident. <sighs> There's people online who do photorealistic sketches and they're always absolutely fascinating to look at. Yeah, because you're looking at that is the most impressive like feat of technical skill I've ever seen. Why are you doing this for like, I don't know, an Imja fucking gallery that gets like 40,000 views and you get no money from it? Instead of like, why is your shit not in like galleries around the world? Because this is amazing. I think it's kind of sad now that with the market being so oversaturated, people like uh, like great artists just sometimes get missed. Yeah, or they're out there like painting shit, like people's Sonic OCs for $10 a piece. So I think me and you quite recently, we've like been in contact with a few artists, like, you know, some stuff we've been doing behind the scenes. And we're astounded by like, the level of skill they have and then the amount of money they charge. Yeah. So oh, how much would you charge for like, you know, this piece of art? And go, oh, like ten dollars. Like, what? Ten this? This super sick awesome drawing, you want ten dollars for it? Not fuck that. And like so, um, I was in contact with an artist recently and they said, oh, how much would you charge for like, this art's great, I want to buy it? And they went, um, it's like twenty dollars. I went double that, and then add some more to it. Cause fuck you, I'm paying you twenty dollars for five, like five hours work. Yeah, there's one artist I was talking to who said that um, they still do free commissions. Do it for free. And you look. I don't at... even do this for free, <laughs> and I drink for half of it. But you look at the work, and you go, I would pay like two hundred quid for a print of that. Yeah. So like a friend of mine, when I moved to my new flat, painted me an actual full canvas painting. 
and handed it to me, and it's me dressed as Spider-Man in front of a green screen holding a mug. And I'm like, this is great, I love it. How much do you want for it? Oh no, it's a gift. They didn't even charge me the fucking canvas. Artists, stop giving people shit for free. <laughs> do it, just charge everyone. Fuck you, pay me. Best advice I ever got. <laughs> It's, cra <laughs> it's crazy to think like some of the artists like I've seen online, they could like if they went back to the time of Giotto or Florence, and they drew out the shit they did. They'd be like, "You are a genius." It's like, "Oh my god, what is this Sonic OC you speak of?" Yeah. <laughs> just imagine that. Or then you get like, people on Deviant Art going back in time, just drawing big old titties, <laughs> it's like, drawing fan art of the Mona Lisa and giving giant ass anime titties. That message from the Pope comes around asking for work, and they just had him like a furry drawing. <laughs> Like some yaoi or some shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. Here's Archangel Michael's first sonar and his giant fur cock. I just, just trying his hedgehog nail to the cross. Just, 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 just some bit really just Sonic fan. The idea of like a deviant artist going back to the time of the Renaissance and just trying furry art of biblical figures. What would like Jesus' first sona be though, you think? Oh what what's first what? what? His first sona. What's a sona? The first sona. Is oh, it, for, is, oh, per, yeah. oh, persona for sona. Yeah, for persona for furries. Is what we oh, call God, it. I, don't, I don't know. Oh my. A lamb. <laughs> He's the lamb of God, isn't he? Well, just the idea. <laughs> just deviant artists going back in time submitting fucking furry porn to <laughs> biblical figures, man. Can we imagine what what would St. Peter's Basilica look like? Because I've seen it. I've been to Florence. It's fucking amazing. And I'm now thinking, how much better would it be if every person on it had big old tits? Isn't, isn't St. Peter's one the one in Rome? In the Vatican? Yeah, I've been to the Vatican as well. Yeah. Oh, well, so you said Florence there. Just... Oh, sorry. I've been, I, went to, um, yeah. I went around Italy. I went from Florence to Rome. Yeah. What was the purpose of the trip? Was it just... I was in Europe for a month. I was doing that thing that people do. Where it's really annoying when they go, like, oh, I'm going to go to Europe for a month and find myself. And do you know what I discovered while I was out there? <laughs> that people who do that are full of fucking shit. Do you know what I missed while I was over there? And I was like, you know, hostel hopping and like, you know, or eating shit food in the marketplace. I really miss my toilet. I really miss sitting on a toilet that I know has got bog roll there. I miss getting a shower and not having to hang my jeans on a hook and the bottoms of the jeans still touch the fucking floor. You know what you didn't miss? What? Sleeping in the bed with a spider. Oh, yeah, man. The thing is, you get foreign, you get Italian spiders, man. You get all sorts of crazy bullshit out there. Yeah, I went out there. So, like, St. Peter's Basilica, fucking phenomenal. I've, I walk I've around. been there as well. The thing is, though, yeah. I walk around it with my headphones in, um, and I was listening to fucking, what was it now? Rhapsody of Fire, which are an Italian <laughs> symphonic metal band or some shit. Like that. And I was walking around with this, like, epic orchestral metal soundtrack. I was looking at all this church shit, and I'm like, yeah, this is, this Jesus is pissed off about this, but you know what? It's okay. Did you go to the Sistine Chapel? Uh, no, because it was 20 quid to get in. <laughs> yeah, we went. I was kind of burnt out on like beautiful churches by that time I got to the back. Like, it's the funny you should say that. Me and my mum went to Rome for four days, and on day four, we went to the Borgia Museum, and we were looking around at all these amazing pieces of artwork, and about halfway through, I turned to my mum and went, you get a bit bored of painting? She went, yes, we've seen so many. And they're, and they're all amazing. They're all so good. You're just like... I've had enough paintings. Yeah, so by the time I got to Sisk, so, um, I was starting in Florence and I saw so the David, yeah. the and I pointed at his dick. Um, so yeah, there's a picture of me out there just pointing at Michelangelo's David, just dick like, just pointing right at his dick. I, I'm, why am I not surprised? And there was a great piece of, like, was a, like, they've got like a description written by some like, famous art critic on it that just says, um, if you only ever see one piece of art, just see this, because you're seeing perfection. You're seeing what artists of the, today are still working towards. You don't need to see anything else. I went, good advice. Glad I saw it first. Done. <laughs> every, thanks for telling me every piece of artwork after this is shit. And then you open up your phone and click on Sonic Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic Christian There's art. Like, ah, it's still got a way to go yet. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, I hate you for introducing me to the concept of Christian Sonic fan Oh, art. it's so good, though. It just, it? it makes no sense. It, what do you mean it doesn't make no sense? What? It makes the most sense. It, no, it doesn't. It's the, it's it's Sonic, the... At no point in Sonic's story did he die. I'd be better if it was Robocop Christian fan art. No, it's Sonic. <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> the furry art in the Renaissance Italy. <laughs> just imagine going to the Sistine Chapel and the entire it. back wall is just full of furries. Here's my Archangel Michael, his giant fur cock. <laughs> Here's Jesus, here's Jesus' mother wrapping the baby Jesus in the three wise men's sonic knuckle and tails. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 
last supper just looks like a fucking furry convention. <laughs> Panasonic knuckles and tails. <laughs> <laughs> and they give him a ring, a gold ring. <laughs> and then Sonic in the speed boost shoes. <laughs> and then Jesus trying to reach out of Sonic. It's like, you're too slow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god. Oh, this start, we're talking about a really famous artist, man. And people tell us that we need to hurry up and get to the fucking point in these videos. You're missing some gold. Let's get back to Giotto again. Okay. Let's leave the furries behind for a bit. Okay, you can never leave the furries behind. <laughs> the furries oh, are everywhere. Coming. Oh, yes. Um, Giotto of Florence, like another thing that I like, quite respect him for, and that people in this era respect him for, is that in addition to being like, you know, a well-respected painter, he was an artist with words, which came quite handy for him, because according to all now historical accounts, Giotto of Florence was fuck ugly. <laughs> So, how fuck ugly are we talking? So fuck ugly that even Giotto's own friends would joke about how unpleasant he was to look at. And there's a great story of a time like Giotto was having a conversation with Dante Alli Alighieri. Alighieri? You know, the, the, the Inferno guy, that dude. He was having a conversation with him. And like Dante casually remarked, Giotto, how could a guy cr like capable of creating such like astonishingly beautiful works of art create such plain looking children? And do you know what like, Giotto's response to this was? He looked Dante right in the eye, gave him a playful slap on the back, and said, Well, my friend, to be fair, I did make those in the dark. Oh, that's such a good fucking line, isn't it? I love the fact as well he didn't defend his children. He's like, No, no, I know my children are ugly. Fuck it. I'm just going to, like, rather than, like, you know, get angry and defend my children, I'm just going to, like, deliver one last verbal slap down to this dude. <laughs> <sighs> and I'm presuming at that exact moment, just like a pair of sunglasses came from the future with like middle fingers etched onto them and just landed on his face. Because holy shit, is that a good comeback? That was an adventure to go through, wasn't it, Brad? And I'm glad you've shared that journey with me. <laughs> holy fuck. But speaking of journeys, like we should probably talk more about Italy. So we've both been, haven't we? And what's your favourite memory of Italy as a country? Ooh. I quite enjoyed um, going around the canals in Venice. It How was... do they smell? I didn't go to Venice. They, they do. I mean, you, it's, <laughs> they, you've got to get over that bit. Yeah, my dad went and said they all smell like poo. It's like <laughs> Venice smells like poo. It's like my dad is so obviously my dad. She's number one takeaway from seeing one of those beautiful places on earth is it smells like poo. And he said he kept seeing like fucking cruise ships going out of canal. It's like, what? It's like you're in a little restaurant. Like, oh yeah, it's really nice, it's really quaint. And it's a big ass cruise ship. <laughs> Barreling through. I've just, I mean, the cruise ships don't fit in the canal. You no, might see go, them go just past, outside. Past, though, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw a cruise ship that was like seven or eight stories tall. It's like, how does that thing not fall over? It doesn't, does it? It's all, it's all the stuff in the bottom. It, yeah, no, but it just looks so like, it, it just looks so encumbered from the top. Well, it's an Italian when it's full of olive oil at the bottom. Weighs it down. <laughs> then you put olive oil in water and it floats at the top. That's the secret. All Italian ships are oh, covered man, I feel like I've learned so much about the, the designing of Italian ships. No, do you know what my favourite memory of Atali, uh, sorry, Atali, Italy is? Yeah. It's Vore Manon Posto. People thinking, what the fuck's that? Those, like, while I was over there with my friend, for some reason, this band or group or guy, I'd never found out. It's called J-Ax. J-A-X. Right. And apparently a very popular musical act in Italy. And they had a song in the charts at the time called Vore Manon Posto. And every single hostel we went to, no matter how far across Italy we got, the moment we put on a TV or the radio or the internet, Vore Manon Posto would come on, to the point where we started cheering because it was the only thing we recognised. <laughs> so we were sat in a hostel once, we were sat there and like, I've never been so hungover. There's a thunderstorm outside. We've got a bottle of limoncello in front of us. I'm like, I can't drink again. Just put the TV on, we'll have a quiet one tonight. Turn the TV on and say, Dun, 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 like opening bars, like, yeah, boy, man, I'm And we were just like, open up the door, we were just singing outside, and there were people downstairs also listening to it, and that song also came on. It's like, yeah! No, I drink it, it's great. See, you say that, right, but I went to Rome, and the song that we, me and my mum kept hearing was Call Me Maybe. <laughs> then I went to Venice, and the song I kept hearing was The Best Song Ever by One Direction. I can't get away from the like the English songs. You know, the that are best popular. bit is though, my mate uh, who I went to Italy with, he went back to Italy like a couple of years later, and he said, when I was over there, guess it was in the charts again. It was J Axe, and they had a new song Italiano. 
and he sent me the link and he showed me a picture of a fucking billboard in the subway. Like, yeah, they're still going. What legends? I showed you that song, that music video for the one I saw in Poland, right? No. The um, it's Ona Lubi Pomerantia is the name of the song. Basically, me and my mum were just like astonished by this because the entire music video, the song is called She Loves Lemons. Uh, oranges, sorry. She loves oranges. Well, that makes all the difference. Right. Yeah, and then the entire video, it's like a wedding that goes wrong and then they're just there dancing with oranges for the entire video. It's yeah, like... Makes sense. Yeah. It makes about as much sense as every other music video on like, yeah, these days. It's true. My favourite one is just like clearly like shit DJ who wanted a free holiday who just like walks around in slow motion with a camera in front of his face as an attractive girl he paid like 40 quid just drags him by the hand to various nightclubs it's like yeah you've got a hustle going on there mate there's that lonely island song where uh called like three white guys in japan yeah where this, this studio gave him all the money yeah. to throw away well the, the best example the blink 182 one. Oh yeah it's like the record cost you saying you need to record a music video for the rock show it's like, okay give us 20 grand and they just threw all the fucking money away <laughs> <sighs> Maybe one day we'll get to that level, mate. But where we can request loads of money off some big conglomerate yeah. company and just throw yeah, it. Yeah, we people. need money. We need money, and we just take it all and just film ourselves like just like throwing it down the drain or whatever. 